Venom. So, I'm a little bit late to the party with this one. I didn't get to watch it in theatres. However, I did vow on New Year's Eve that this year, 2019, I'll be watching a hell of a lot more movies in theatres. So that means you all are going to get reviews closer to release dates. I finally got to watch Venom last night. It's one of my all-time favourite characters ever so i was always going to do this video talk about it and definitely give you my thoughts and a solid review now i just want to start off by mentioning that critics savagely beat this movie as we can see on rottentomatoes.com which i'm going to bring up in a moment here whoop let me just shift forward so checking out rottentomatoes.com 28 percent is a pitiful score, a pitiful score, especially for a movie that was hyped up, hyped up like this was, and with such a phenomenal cast like this has. Really, really good actors in there. Twenty-eight percent by critics, but if you look at the audience score, it's eighty-four percent. That's a very, very large discrepancy. It, unusual even for Rotten Tomatoes. It's not usually that large. It's usually like twenty, thirty, even like thirty plus is considered like a large discrepancy. But almost 60%, so something weird's going on there. Maybe critics are missing something that the audience actually noticed. But I was always going to watch this. Most people gave this negative reviews. Even my favorite reviewers online, my favorite content creators. Uh, Angry Joe is one person that usually is sort of on, on the sa in the same sort of ballpark as me. He, he always uh, reviews movies very... He has similar thoughts to what I have. And he gave it quite a negative review. He didn't say it was too bad, but definitely wasn't positive about it. Now, I have to... I might get in trouble for what I'm about to say here, but I enjoyed this movie. I actually liked it. It's definitely far from amazing and flawless, but it's nowhere near as bad as what the critics are saying, I don't think, anyway. And as a huge fan of Venom, I'm probably more fussy about what they do with this character and a lot more hard to please than, than just, you know, your average uh, audience member or moviegoer, cinephile. I actually enjoyed this movie. Um, it does have some flaws and some negatives, and I'm going to get into all that. We're going to talk about positives as well, obviously. From the first act, I was super impressed, and I thought, well, I just wonder when this movie is going to bomb. I was just waiting for it to lose pace and to just really bomb because of all these negative reviews, but hey, it didn't. It was well-paced throughout the whole film. And I actually enjoyed it the whole time. So I don't know whether you agree with me. If you don't, let me know in the comments below. But I'm just someone that's always incredibly honest. I'm not a sheep. I'm not going to agree with anybody when it comes to, to movie reviews and, and tastes in things. I'm going to watch it for myself, judge it for myself. And I'm going to always be unbiased. I'm not going to care who's directing it. I'm not going to care who's starring in it. If the movie's good and I enjoy it, I'm going to let you know. If I think it's crap and everyone thinks it's good, I'm still going to let you know that it's crap. So I'm always going to be honest and you all can always rely on your creepy uncle to be honest with you all. So let's start with some negatives first. This was supposed to be an R-rated movie, which really would have been fitting for Venom because he's such an anti-hero. He's, he's always killing people. He doesn't really let criminals just get away like Spider-Man does or web them up and wait for the police to come. He'll kill them. He's an anti-hero. He's kind of in between. He's neutral. Not exactly a good guy, but definitely not a bad guy. <sighs> a PG rating doesn't really holds this movie back big time. This could have been a great Close to perfect film, probably for me, in my eyes, if they went down the R-rated path. And they were supposed to. And then at some stage, they decided to go PG-13. And I can understand why. Because at some stage, they're going to want to do like a crossover with Spider-Man. And Spider-Man isn't R-rated. It's definitely a PG-rated audience. So, having said that, even if they did a crossover, I still personally think they could have just did like a standalone, or if they're doing standalone Venom films, make them R-rated, like Deadpool and Logan. We've had a lot of successful R-rated movies. 
this would have been definitely fitting for an R rating. And I haven't got anything against PG rated movies, if that's what you're lot thinking. Like, look at the Avengers, you know, PG, uh, a PG rating works great for them. Infinity War, I gave a perfect score on my uh, Bannock scale of 13. I gave it a 13 out of 13, a flawless score. The movie was amazing. PG definitely works, but I just think for Venom... R rating definitely would have been more fitting and more appropriate. But that still doesn't make this a bad movie. I just think it could have been a great movie had they gone down the R18 path. There's a lot of uh, parts in the movie that the camera doesn't actually show, such as Venom biting people's heads off, because that's not really appropriate for a PG rating. It'll, it'll, it, it really takes you out of the moment and it really sort of disconnects you from Venom as an anti-hero and he's more of a hero. You feel like he's more of a hero instead of an anti-hero because they don't show these parts and it takes away from his, his brutality. So I can understand why some, some reviewers out there are saying, oh, he's such a good guy. He's not an anti-hero like in the comics, blah, blah, blah. Well, he is because he goes around freaking biting people's heads off and, and breaking their bones and stuff. But... They just don't show it all because it's a PG rated film. So do you see what I mean? It's not really fitting for the movie. So that's negative number one. That's probably the biggest one for me. The other one was Riz Ahmed who plays Drake, the evil science corporation leader who's getting all these symbiotes from outer space and um, using humans to to do uh, testing on them and try and bond them with symbiotes and, and, and just like he's got all this evil plan to, to, to bond with symbiotes and then we can visit their planet. He just... Like, I'm not taking any credit away from the guy as an actor. He's a superb actor. He's really good. I think one of his um, most well-acted films was Nightcrawler. But that... That was really fitting for him that character really really suited him in in this case even though he's a great actor i don't think it just quite suits him he's not quite convincing as drake you know this they should have gone with an older gentleman that uh, just had a bit more of a sinister look and feel to him drake <sighs> Rizma, Riz Ahmed is uh, probably a little bit too young and I just didn't find him too convincing as this, you know, evil uh, life corporation science leader uh, with all these evil intentions. It's, it's, it's not really a big negative, that one. I just think they could have found someone a little bit more fitting. I just think he was definitely miscast uh, into that role. But like I said, that's not a big one there. The other one... Those of you that have watched my other movie reviews and have listened to me talk about movies in the past, you will know that I don't like too much CGI in my films. Even I criticized Black Panther at the end for having too much CGI in it. Uh, throughout that film, it was pretty good, but then it got a bit too CGI festish at the end. This was really borderline um, with CGI. I think it was probably leaning towards a little too much CGI, but... It never, like, I could tolerate it. Uh, the, the most CGI that we see is towards the end when there's this big battle with symbiotes, and I'm not going to, you know, mention what happens because no spoilers. I'll probably do some spoilers at the end of this video. Definitely won't do a separate video. I can cover it all, in this, you know, cover it all off in this one video. But I just feel that the end was really testing me when it comes to, like, borderline too much CGI. I think it was becoming a bit too much. Um, having said that, I'll talk about the CGI and how Venom looks like in the positives. So I guess, you know, there is a positive when it comes to the CGI. I just feel like towards the end, it was becoming a bit too much. For the most part, it looked all right. But like as someone that's really fussy with CGI and I am I really don't like it being used unless it has to, I'm always going to sort of be on the, the, non, the practical effects side of things. But... Having said that, that's not a huge negative either. For the most part, it looks pretty good, but towards the end, it gets a little bit too much when it comes to CGI. Now, the pros or the positives, Tom Hardy, I think, was really good in this. It's hard to fault the guy when it comes to his acting ability. Most of the movies that I've seen with him, he's one of my favorite actors. Like, every movie that he does, you know, Inception, Lawless, The Dark Knight... Um, what's that fighting movie, Warrior? He, he's just, he's really good in every movie. I can't really, like, fault him um, for the score. Was it the score? I can't know. It wasn't, I can't remember the movie that he did with uh, Tony Soprano, James Gandolfini. 
I forget the name of it, but um, that was a re- he, he was so good in that. He played a New, New Yorker in that as well, and he was really good in that. Like I can't really think of a movie where he acted badly in. So he was great, I thought, definitely. Um, and one of the best parts of the film, and I think most people will agree, and most people that gave this uh, overall negative review, the positives they'll see out of it was the bonding experience between Venom, the symbiote, and um, Eddie Brock, the character that Tom Hardy plays. When they bond, it's kind of like a Jekyll and Hyde game, and it's it really works super well, and most people wanted to see a lot more of that. I think the movie makers were trying to listen to fans because fans wanted to see a lot more Venom, so they probably accelerated that process a little bit. But I think we kind of saw enough bonding. Yes, I would have wanted to see more, the doc- the whole Dr. Jekyll, evil versus good kind of thing. It, it worked really well. Uh, Venom's voice is, is super awesome in this, and it's when they're bonding, <laughs> it's, it's just the best part of the movie, I think, for sure, and, and most people agree with that. So if you haven't checked this movie out... You'll know what I'm talking about when you watch it. Now, moving on, as I mentioned, Venom's voice. It's a 10 out of 10 or a 13 out of 13. I loved Venom's voice. It was really good in this. They did a really good job with it. It sounded evil. It sounded sinister. It definitely, they definitely did a a great job with Venom's voice. I loved it. Uh, Same goes for the way that Venom looked. If, If it's on a score out of 10, I'd give that a 9. Only losing one measly point because it's a little bit too CGI-ish. It's still a bit noticeably fake. Not as bad as um, the Cyborg in Justice League. That was like awful CGI. But in this case, he definitely looked awesome. Uh, a lot of people don't like that didn't have his logo on his chest, but I think it's good that they're going down a more modern look and not giving all these superheroes these big, you know, logos on their chests, which is very sort of circa 70s, 80s comic book style. I think it's good that they're modernizing uh, a lot of the villains and the superhero suits, such as Batman and Venom, I think looked phenomenal. As far as the looks went, he's big, he's muscular, his tongue's super long. I think they absolutely nailed it with him. Uh, 9 out of 10 only like they lose it loses the point on looks because it just looks a bit too CGI-ish it's a little bit fake at times but you know I'm very critical about that sort of stuff so and a lot of people mentioned that they're not happy that Venom isn't quite the anti-hero that he's more of a hero so yes he does help to save the planet from Riot another symbiote which you know I'm not going to reveal too much about the storyline what happens there but he does help save the planet and decide to stay on Earth because it turns out that he's a loser, kind of like Eddie Brock, like a cowardly kind of loser on you know whatever planet he's from. So he decides to stay on Earth. So together when they bond, they just bond very well and they, they work very well together. So they're very unloserish when they're together. So Venom decides to stay. It's kind of a, a turning point. Like he, he, he starts off really evil and then kind of changes his mind quite drastically and quite quickly, which is maybe a little bit unusual in the film. Maybe it just like they must have left out some part that happened or something like that, the way it was edited, because it just kind of, at the drop of a hat, decided um, to change his mind and save the planet. But other than that, a lot of people have been complaining that he's not brutal enough. However, it's just the PG rating. Like he bites people's freaking heads off. He, He breaks their limbs and just leaves them for dead. At the end of the movie, we're treated to a bit where he really close up bites someone's head off. But unfortunately, because it's not an R-rated flick, they pan away from that scene and just focus on someone's reaction to to what to Venom biting the head off, which is unfortunate, like I've rambled on about. But to say that he's not an anti-hero and not being the brutal Venom that we know, that's rubbish because he is. It's just unfortunate that it's a PG rating and some people aren't convinced. So I I think the brutality is definitely there. They could have cranked it up a notch, but obviously it's a bit hard with the rating. The other thing I forgot to mention is the humor, which is kind of right in the middle of the negative and the positive. I think they did a bit, they went a bit overboard with the humor, which I suppose you can definitely do when it's PG rated. I wish that they just went a little bit darker. I wish they went a little bit darker with an R rating and that this movie would have probably been perfect for me. I'd be giving it 
a 12 or a 13 for sure. So the humor, even though most of the time was funny and I, I found that it was fitting to the movie, I think they just overdid it just a tiny bit. There was some, some bits that really weren't that funny. Um, I did laugh at a lot of them and I liked a lot of the humor, but I think they just went a little bit overboard with the humor. But having said that, it kind of goes both ways. You know, it's going to be hit or miss either way. So overall, I think they did a, a, a good job of this movie. I, um, I didn't, I wasn't bored at any stage and I didn't dislike it at any time other than everything that I covered. I think I've covered everything pretty well there, all the negatives, all the positives, all the pros, all the cons. So on the evil Bannock scale of 13, what do I rate Venom? I'll have to give Venom a very solid 10 out of 13. The negatives drag it down a little bit. Like I kept mentioning throughout the video, if it was an R18 rating, this probably would have scored a 12 or a 13. Definitely. It would have been a lot more fitting to the movie. They could have removed a bit more humor and showed a bit more of the, the graphic brutality that Venom is responsible for throughout the film. Unfortunately, they opted to go for PG-13. I think it's just to do crossovers with maybe both Avengers and Spider-Man in the future. Kind of makes sense, but I still kind of think they could have just left Venom Venom's origin story and just left Venom as like a, uh, a solo kind of... Uh, project and they could have left it as an R rating as you know different uh, films that didn't need to connect with the Avengers or Spider-Man they could have toned it down when Venom's in those films but just sort of kept it R18 for this but still a pretty solid score so what you're waiting for if you haven't seen it already go watch it don't listen to the critics about this one just let me know in the comments below what you thought and I just hope that my reviews help you all. See you all again real soon and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Your creepy uncle cannot wait to see you again.